tonight we're going to have our toes in the water and ass in the sand for AEW Dynamite Beach Break and WWE NXT. Thanks for tuning in and listening to my live reactions play, play audio only of AEW Dynamite and WWE NXT this evening live right here on YouTube. As always, I'm your host, Encyclopedia Sports, Cool Hand Luke 96. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on social media. Links in the description below. That thumbs up button, share hashtag AEW, hashtag WWE NXT, chat questions and comments, super chat, super stickers, always greatly appreciated as well. Tonight, AEW Dynamite, we will have the wedding of Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford with the best man, Mero. Happy Mero Day, everyone. And then WWE NXT will turn rated R as this year's Royal Rumble winner, Edge, will be on the show. The Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic will also continue as well. So without any further ado, let's get into it for tonight's AEW Dynamite Beach Break and WWE NXT as officially we're on the road to the next NXT TakeOver event on Valentine's Day along with Revolution early March and officially now on the road to WrestleMania 37. Then now WWE Forever, also the opening video package weekly for AW Dynamite. Kick off NXT with a recap from last week as the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic for both men's and women's is currently going on. I'd assume here shortly uh, we'll find out when those finals are going to be, I'd assume. NXT TakeOver on Valentine's Day. Also tonight, NXT, this year's Royal Rumble winner, Edge. He'll be on the show, as mentioned earlier, as he can now choose the champion of his choosing to face off against at WrestleMania 37. Jurassic Express is going to kick off the night with Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy himself here tonight on AEW Dynamite. We have a Tag Team Battle Royale, if I'm not mistaken, to determine the new number one contenders. And then if the Young Bucks, who are also in the match, end up winning, uh, they will then end up uh, getting to choose who they face against for those AEW World Tag Team titles uh, at, uh, I believe, Revolution at some point down the line. Uh, I do, in fact, uh, believe it would be a Revolution. They'd be stupid. Uh, I think to, you know, have it on an episode of Dynamite, especially of a match of that caliber. But now uh, here come uh, one of the tag teams out of the inner circle with uh, Le Champion, your demo god himself, Y2J, Chris Jericho, with MJF. There's also uh, the tag team of uh, Sammy Hager with Jake Hager and Simon Guevara. And now they got Sammy Hagar um, giving them a intro tonight, AW Dynamite Beach Break, which is sort of funny, of course, because same name. It's basically said the same, except, you know, there's only uh, one letter that's different, and that's the A to E, and Hagar to Hagar. Of course, Sammy Hagar, a rock and roll legend. Uh, as Chris Jericho is also the front man of Fozzie. Uh, however, on NXT now, following the last week recap, we have a tag team match going to kick off the night in the women's tag team Dusty Rhodes Classic. And now here come as we have actually the whole inner circle now ringside. Uh, the Acclaim are making their entrance, so we got... Jurassic Express with the Inner Circle and now the Acclaimed on this. I believe it's about a royal if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes. Yes, in fact it is. As, of course, as always, good old JR, Jim Ross, Tony Schiavone and Excalibur on commentary. But now here, in fact, come your AW World Tag Team Champions and Matt Nick Jackson, the Bucks of Youth, as Matt Hardy calls them, the Young Bucks, as they give us a flashback to 2020, which was, of course, last year. Seems like 
that year drug on for ever, but now here we are in 2021, and hey, things are, for the most part, still the same, but AW Dynamite Beach Break, they had to change the name because last year was Bash at the Beach, of course, with copyright and everything, um, that being still owned uh, by the WWE, WWE and Cody Rhodes going back and forth, didn't really win that battle, so they just, you know, change up the name uh, for this uh, pay-per-view worthy TV special as AW Dynamite Beach Break Edition is now underway as the Young Bucks they do their entrance but then they jump off the stage and take everyone out ringside bell now officially rings match underway and the Young Bucks are in full control here with a double super kick and another super kick we also in this match have the Dark Order along with Private Party, Santana and Ortiz, as we have the rest of the Inner Circle now there in the middle of the ring as well. All hell is broken loose. This tag team battle royal match is underway, and the winner, as mentioned, will in fact face the Young Bucks for the AEW World Tag Team titles. As mentioned, I do believe, in fact, at Revolution, if I'm mistaken. But if the Young Bucks win, they end up get to uh, choose who they will end up facing. So, a lot on the line here. There's MJF, Jericho, the claimed private party. Who else we got? It looks like it. Yeah, Dark Order. Everyone I've already named off in this uh, matchup. However, the Women's Dust Roads Tag Team Classic on WWE NXT now underway we got um, there's Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez taking on is that Casey uh, Catanzaro with Caden Carter yes it is they're in uh, lime green wardrobes in the meantime they so you can't miss them yeah that's Caden Carter and Casey Catanzaro shot to ricochet Undisputed Era with Champa and Thatcher, they advertised that for later on tonight. So a good tag team match there. A lot of tag team action on this Wednesday night. So currently, this Battle Royal on NXT or on AEW, excuse me, and then a basic regular um, tag team match on WWE NXT. So both Yellow Brands, of course, head to head on uh, TNT and USA. WWE Network moving to Peacock. We'll see the future holds for. NXT on USA Network, you know, by the end of the year, uh, as uh, rumor is, the TV deal for NXT is going to come to an end after a two-year contract this October, uh, as hard to believe it'll be two years come this October since the NXT debuted on national TV, but um, yeah, currently right now on WWE NXT, this Women's Dusty Roads Tag Team Classic continues. We got Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez versus Caden Carter and Casey Catanzaro. So yeah, you can't miss them. They're wearing their lime green outfits. Shout out to Ricochet, the one and only who returned uh, during the Royal Rumble this past Sunday. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, they advertised the Undisputed Era with Adam Cole, Bebe, with Roderick Strong, uh, as Bobby Fish is once again still on the shelf, injured. However, still in the mix, but Kyle Riley's been getting a singles push the past few months now. Um, and we're on the road to the next NXT TakeOver event on Valentine's Day. We'll see if they change the name or not. Hopefully they do. If they do, it'll be uh, St. Valentine's Day Massacre. It'd be stupid not uh, to do that. It makes sense. But, I mean, I'd understand because, you know, mid-February, year in and year out, you're not going to have a TakeOver on Valentine's Day because Valentine's Day isn't always going to be on a Saturday or Sunday. So, But then maybe through the week, you know, as they did with Halloween Havoc, that route. But, but we'll see. Uh, but as mentioned, you know, um, potentially we'll have the finals of this Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic for both men's and the first ever women's at that takeover. So on the road to takeover as NXT uh, hits a commercial break in the meantime. But uh, it'll be Undisputed Era with Adam Cole and Roderick Strong versus Chompa and Thatcher. Tomas Chompa to Thatcher after they had... Um, their most recent matchup 
uh, in a uh, pit fight match, if I'm mistaken, uh, just a few weeks back, and now are a tag team uh, in the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. Uh, very well, both teams could be favorites to win, but win or go home uh, in a uh, tag team tournament. So uh, only one, of course, will advance, uh, and then we'll see what the future holds moving forward. But then, um, as mentioned as well, Edge on the show this evening too. So um, we'll see what. He has to say if he's going to, you know, tease challenging potentially the current NXT champion of Finn Balor uh, just because he won the Royal Rumble, you know, Raw. Hey, you told McIntyre, who's your WWE champion right now, you'll know when I uh, make an announcement on whether or not, you know, if you're going to be my opponent for the WWE title or not, you'll know if I challenge you. Um, And then also on NXT with Finn Balor. He could challenge him, so they're teasing at least. So Edge McIntyre, Edge Balor, WrestleMania 37. But then you also have the current Universal Champion, Big Dog, Tribal Chief, head of the table, Roman Reigns on the blue brand on Friday night. It's Friday Night SmackDown, Universal Champion there. So um, only uh, one title change on Sunday at the Rumble, and that was the women's tag team titles with Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler uh, recapturing those. Um, we had uh, McIntyre, of course, Retain over Goldberg, so Drew McIntyre still your WWE champion. Uh, and then, uh, I mean, Balor retained last month uh, at the WWE NXT uh, New Year's Evil event, uh, up head to head with AW Dynamite New Year's Smash. Uh, and then uh, Reigns also retained over uh, Kevin Owens as well to uh, still be your current. Universal Champion in a last man standing match, but now in the meantime, back from commercial break on WWE NXT, Caden Carter and Casey Catanzaro versus Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez. This Battle Royal tag team match as well continues on AEW Dynamite. Young Bucks still in full control. I mean, it's been back and forth for the most part with uh, all these teams, some more eliminations. Um, in the meantime, so Battle Royal, of course, the only way to win um, is to, in fact, uh, as the Good Brothers appear ringside now, to sweep me. Shout out to the current Impact Tag Team Champs and the big LG Luke Gallows and Machine Gun Carl Anderson himself as AEW sort of teamed up, you know, since uh, the beginning of December. With Impact Wrestling, Gals and Anderson helping out the Young Bucks with an elimination of Private Party. MJF from behind. MJF eliminating the Young Bucks. So Jericho and MJF left in the ring. They do the Young Bucks pose, which is pretty funny. However, we still got Sammy Guevara with Jake Hager. Sammy Hager in this with Jurassic Express. Asshole chance from the crowd. Actually, okay, it's only one half of Sammy Hager with Sammy Guevara with two other members of the Inner Circle with Jericho and MJF, and then the Acclaimed with Jungle Boy. So as long as there's still one person left of your tag team, you're still in the match. And then if you're, of course, the last one standing, your tag team will then win. Out of these, I would think, I mean, since MJF eliminated the Young Bucks, I would think, Jericho and MJF are going to win this. I'm not going to be surprised, though, if the Acclaim do. It seems like they're very high on them. I mean, maybe Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus, Jurassic Express are going to get another push here. Really haven't done a whole lot with them as of late. Uh, MJF, in the meantime, almost eliminating Jungle Boy. He's already gone over the top rope. He's laying on the ring apron. Here come the rest of the inner circle to eliminate Jungle Boy. He's hanging on by a thread. fighting back now 
And then the acclaimed to the rescue. Wardlow's ringside just walking around in a suit and ties, the bodyguard he is. We've got a few uh, officials, few referees also ringside. Okay, now Jungle Boy officially eliminated. So uh, MJF, he's awesome. I tell you what, man, that was pretty funny. He uh, just acted like he was a, a wild monkey uh, pounded on his chest. Jungle Boy, of course, supposed to be from the jungle. Son of the late great Luke Perry. Super kick from Sammy Guevara to MJF. Actually, MJF moves out of the way, which is a good thing, and they hit the acclaimed. But then the acclaimed eliminate MJF. So MJF eliminates Jericho. Uh, inner circle tag team with Jericho and MJF are going to win this. Jericho is going to have to pick up the win by himself. But now we're down to four. Or even three, sorry. We got uh, Jericho and Sammy Guevara of the Inner Circle, and then one half of the acclaimed left in this tag team battle royal during AEW Dynamite Beach Break. In the meantime, Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez pick up the win in the first ever women's Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic, and then they show the uh, bracket up on the screen behind some fans. And then they, uh, what's this? They just teased NXT Vengeance. What the hell? Are they changing the name? All right. NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day. Vengeance, of course, used to be an old WWE pay-per-view. So NXT uh, reviving some of those. So they are, in fact, changing the name. However, it's not going to be St. Valentine's Day Massacre, unfortunately. So it's going to be on Valentine's Day, though, this year, February 14th, 2021. NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day where we'll have the finals to the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic for both men's and women's. Jericho eliminating Guevara and the acclaimed Chris Jericho and MJF as Wardlow now enters the ring as well. Jericho and MJF win this Tag Team Battle Royal and they'll end up facing the Young Bucks for the uh, Tag Team Gold. I do, in fact, believe at Revolution, as mentioned, NXT, they pan to Vic Joseph got some bad news for you bad news wade barrett and beth phoenix on the call actually back live in orlando for commentary backstage now in nxt hashtag aw dynamite hashtag WWE NXT as well tony storm interview she was in the women's royal rumble on sunday did not win unfortunately but future very very bright for her she is in fact uh currently in a story for the NXT Women's Championship if I'm not mistaken I don't believe that match has in fact been made official but it very well could have been by now I haven't really uh, been up to date as of late with AW or NXT by any means uh, with football season of course wrapping up here um, with the Super Bowl now on Sunday with the Chiefs and Buccaneers and uh, now officially on the road to Wrestlemania with the Rumble kicking things off this past weekend they advertise for Beach Break tonight. Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers themselves uh, will take on John Moxley, Pac, and Ray Phoenix. The wedding of Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford as well. Best Man Miro, Thunder Rosa, and the Doctor Britt Baker in singles competition. Hangman Adam Page and Matt Hardy. Very well, two uh, suitors for the. New leadership of the Dark Order. They'll be in uh, tag team action as well. And then uh, Darby Allen and Sting before they face off against Team Taz at Revolution. They'll be up next on AEW Dynamite Beach Break. So we'll hit a commercial break. However, who's this? Jade Cargill backstage. Actually, more of a um, vignette video package for her in the weight room picking up some weights but it looks like the TNT champ in Darby Allen with Sting will uh, have some sort of interview or something along those lines coming up uh, after the commercial NXT just hit another one 
Austin Theory going to be in action next. He's been uh, in with Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae as of late. Gargano, your current NXT North American champion. Jade Cargill getting a fresh logo there, it looked like. We are, in fact, watching AEW Dynamite. AEW Dynamite Beach Break Special Edition tonight on TNT. Thank you for you. For listening, now we got backstage talking it over with NXT GM and William Regal. Of course, they have history from back in the day. And speaking of vengeance, now that that's coming back, um, Edge has had, uh, as he's on NXT this evening, um, had some damn good matches from what I can recall on that uh, very pay-per-view in the past. So... Uh, happy that they are changing the name from just a simple NXT TakeOver event on Valentine's Day uh, now to NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day rather than just Vengeance. Um, they have been bringing back older WWE pay-per-views uh, the past year or so. Uh, but um, wish it would have been St. Valentine's Day Massacre just for this year because it falls on Valentine's Day, but as mentioned there a little bit earlier, you know, I understand why moving forward, if they're going to keep it, you know, year in and year out, um, you know, because with Valentine's Day falling on a Sunday this year, of course, next year it's not. Valentine's Day on a Saturday or Sunday only happens every, you know, few years. So, um, and then with NXT on a Wednesday right now, you know, we'll see if it's going to stay on a Wednesday or not, move to a, you know, Tuesday or Thursday maybe. Tuesday, I think, would be the best option there. Um, we'll see what happens with AEW and Impact if there's a buyout of some sorts with the partnership that they currently have. Um, you know, only time's going to tell. Future bright for, as I always say, both these companies. So um, we'll see what happens. But uh can only take one thing at a time here for the time being in the meantime. So, And speaking of in the meantime, Leon Ruff in the ring awaiting his uh, opponent in Austin Theory. So Theory comes out with Johnny Gargano. They make their entrance, and now this match officially underway as Gargano is, in fact, ringside. Nice drop kick there by Leon Ruff, a former NXT North American champion. We could see maybe Theory turn on Gargano. At some point, maybe not, probably not, I don't know. We'll see what future holds for Gargano. I've never really liked him. But but he is a, you know, current champion. And, um, you know, it has to speak for something. So, um, current TNT champion, Darby Allen and Sting with Tony Schiavone making the entrance. They advertise a few more matches for NXT tonight as well. We got Legato Del Fantasma versus Lucha House Party with Santos Escobar then in singles competition by himself. He'll defend the Cruiserweight title against Kurt Stallion as well. So, now Gargano, and I say what I just said, you know, to an extent, because he's just been in a holding pattern, even though he's all over the place. You know, his booking, it's good, but then it's also bad. It makes sense, but doesn't make sense. And it's just hard to, you know, get hooked on it. And he's never, at, at least for myself, at least, been... Somebody I've liked, like I said, I've never really liked him. You know, I've liked Chompa between the two of them, going back to the DIY days. But, um, yeah, as uh, on WWE NXT, Austin Theory battles Leon Ruff in singles competition with Johnny Gargano at ringside. Tony Schiavone in the middle of the ring on AEW Dynamite Beach Break introduces the current TNT champion in Darby Allin. Uh, and now the uh, here comes the icon Sting, who of course, uh, the same night, uh, AEW partnered with Impact, uh, with uh, 
the Good Brothers coming out after Moxley dropped the AEW World title to the current AEW World Champion and the cleaner himself, Kenny Omega. Sting, earlier in the night, had made his debut, his first appearance ever in AEW. And that live reaction play play stream is live right here on the YouTube channel, so be sure to go check that out. But now here almost, uh, well actually now two months later as we're into February, AEW Dynamite got Tony Schiavone with Darby Allen and Sting now in the ring for an interview. Shivani once again doing it all by himself as JR just does commentary ringside. Excalibur really doesn't do a whole lot other than commentary as well on Wednesday nights. Taz with Excalibur on AW Dark, Tuesday nights on YouTube. Yeah, they do all that. Um, but in ring stuff with interviews. It's always, especially if it has to do with Sting, it's t Tony Schiavone, because they know it sells. Um, even backstage, when um, what's his name's not there, uh, it's you know, it, it's always it's always Tony Schiavone, you know, uh, doing most of the work. I mean, they have a few other backstage uh, interviewers, but Taz up on the screen. So segue from speaking of Taz. We got Team Taz actually outside of Daly's place in Jacksonville, as the Jags actually have a new uh, football coach as well, and former Florida and Ohio State head man in Urban Meyer, as Urban Meyer will make the leap to the National Football League for the first time. See, so he does in the future, but uh, we got Team Taz now with Taz, Ricky Starks. There's Hook, I do believe Taz's son's name is. Uh, with uh, Hobbs and Brian Cage as well, who is still your AW uh, FTW champion. Um, for some reason, they still have that title on the show. He has not done a damn thing with it. Makes no sense other than, hey, we got this uh, guy holding a title just to make him look good, but they've um, Hobbs, they've done more with as of late, as Sting now cut in a promo. Uh, we got uh, Shivani uh, leaving the ring, gave the mic to Sting, so Sting and Darby Allen in the ring. But this has to do with uh, Come Revolution. It'll be Darby Allen and Sting in tag team competition against Team Taz. It'll be Starks and Hobbs, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and that goes back to Cage, then. He's still FTW champion, but there aren't really a damn thing with him. Uh, and then Hook's just there for the hell of it. Um, I think that's what his name is. I don't know. If, if I'm mistaken, let me know in the comments. Uh, and then Taz is, you know, Taz. Like, he's just, you know, the head man for Team Taz. And, um... You know, he's on commentary every once in a while, as mentioned. Next week, they announce Darby Allen will defend his TNT championship against... Is that Joey Janela? Yeah, that's Joey Janela, all right. All right. That should be a good match. Now we got Thunder Rosa. Uh, video package for the upcoming match with Rosa and Punk's Tawny Zone, Dr. DMD, Britt Baker. As Groundhog Day, of course, was... Just the other day. So we'll have to see if Baker sees Adam Cole's shadow or not, as Punk's Tony Phil did. And we now have uh, six more weeks of winter. But uh, the waiting room's been uh, a fun segment on AW, I've thought at least, as of late. Uh, they've added that into the show. Um, it's It's sort of like a... Miz TV, if you will. Um, but here now comes the number one role model in Dr. DMD. Britt Baker is the doctor. We'll see us. Here comes Dr. DMD Britt Baker making her entrance. She's about to do battle with Thunder Rosa in singles competition. This match should absolutely steal the show. We just had Dexter Loomis attack. I, I do believe that was... Uh, 
Austin Theory post match following Austin Theory and Leon Ruff. And now we got uh, Sintas Escobar about to defend his cruiserweight title, it looks like, against Kurt Stallion, if I'm mistaken. They're running a video package for that. And I, I say that only because uh, Del Fontaus is also in a tag team match as well against Lucha House Party. So either one of those two matches is upcoming next. Um, here comes Reba as well, not McIntyre, but just Reba, whether she's a rebel or not, side by side with Britt Baker. Now here comes Thunder Rosa. She's already in the ring, just ran out and throwing uh, Reba ringside and then Baker from behind with the takedown match now officially underway as the bell rings. So video package hyping up an upcoming match with Legato Del Fantasma on NXT and then singles competition Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa on AEW Dynamite but back to Team Taz real quick as NXT hits a commercial break in the meantime rope break Thunder Rosa going to have to break the count here once again thank you for tuning in and listening be sure to like follow and subscribe on social media links in the description below um Hobbs, as of late, they've been pushing him. You know, he turned heel, joined Team Taz. Um, to start off, it was it was Taz and, you know, Brian Cage. Uh, they inserted this was going back now to June, July, August, sometime in there. Um, on the road to All Out. He won the FCW title. He's had it since, but he's not really done a whole lot with it. You know, Cage really... Isn't that good anyway, I don't think. But then, um, you know, he's just that big man that they're trying to get over that they're not doing anything with. Um, because I don't know if they don't know what to do with him. I mean, keeping him in this four or five man stable, it's a good thing. At least he's on TV and stuff. Same thing goes for Wardlow, but with Wardlow, he's just, you know, been MJF's uh, goddamn bodyguard, you know, since, you know, AEW debuted, for God's sakes. Like, come on, like, how much worse can he get? I mean, he's been in, you know, matches every once in a while, but, I mean, at least he's on TV, too, but go back to the booking, you know, as I always do with WWE, if only the booking was ten times better, you know, it'd be, it'd be, um, for the most part, a better show, like, you're not gonna have to worry about ratings, but AEW's been crushing that against NXT, uh, as of late, but, um, I'll digress regardless as Thunder Rosa with a pin kick out at two by Dr. DMD Britt Baker. Um, we're actually going to have a women's match it looks like coming up next on NXT as well. Uh, but uh, we'll see about that as we come back from commercial break. Um, yeah, we got an entrance or maybe even another video package. But um, no, um, with... Uh, with how uh, AW's portrayed, you know, some of these superstars to be, you know, I get it. You know, as I've said, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. You know, they're building the company. And for the most part, you know, those are really, other than their women's division. And, and Baker's going to be a future women's champion. She should have already been, but she's battled injury. So I get it. Uh, but she's going to be the face uh, of the women's division here moving forward. Hopefully she will be at least. Um, with that uh, toy kid belt that AEW has for the women's championship. I mean, hell. Um, Sheeta. You had Nala Rose. Really, other than that, they haven't had anybody at the top of the women's division. And when they brought in Thunder Rosa, she was still with the NWA and... Now Rosa and Baker in singles competition. So yeah, this looks like a entrance video package hyping up something down the line maybe for NXT. So yeah, I don't even know what the hell that was. But now, yeah, speak of the devil, Legato Del Fantasma in the ring. So we'll have a, uh, a tag team match. It'll be Legato Del Fantasma versus Lucha House Party in the uh, men's Dusty Rhodes tag team classic now on WWE. NXT, so uh, we're going to have to wait for Census Escobar and Kurt Stallion a little bit later on. 
In the meantime, though, Baker and Rosa continues. They're now fighting ringside, but um, you know, for the most part, they've built this whole entire company with storylines and um, just everything that you, you need to do to have a have a good show to make people want to watch. Long story short. They've, for the most part, nine times out of ten here since as they hit a split screen commercial, hashtag AW Dynamite, hashtag WWE NXT when you share. Thank you once again for tuning in and watching. We're currently listening, actually, audio only. Links in the description below for social media. Chat questions and comments always greatly appreciated as well. They've done that, you know. There's there's only been a few, and, you know, that's why I bring up, uh, you know, with Wardlow. You know, Brian Cage is one, as mentioned. Hobbs is... Uh, gonna have a good future, um, whether he's gonna be face or heel. But he turned heel, joined, you know, Team Taz. Team Taz going back, circle back around here, uh, trying to wrap it up here. Um, you know, it was only Taz and Cage summertime, and then they add in Ricky Starks, who who signed with the company. Um, Hook has been around here as of late. I don't know what his deal is, um, but um, still. They're all on TV for the most part, week in and week out. And with social media nowadays, too, people, if you watch, you know, these shows, everyone knows, you know, for the most part, who who people are. Um, and then they, they have brought in Hobbs. And Hobbs is probably the um, one who has the most potential um, out of the whole group. But circling back around to the. Darby Allen Sting promo there just uh, before this Baker Rosa match on AEW. Um, Team Taz was outside of Daly's place in Duval, responding to, of course, what. Um, actually, they cut him off, and then Darby and Sting responded because they're going to have a tag team match at Revolution, which uh, was supposed to, in fact, be the end of February as has been uh, but um, now moving forward at least for this year at least um, it'll be the first weekend of March but this is all just going to depend on what else is really going on because that's why they moved the date um, and it seems like they've settled on March 6th March 7th uh, that's when AW Revolution will be so we've got a takeover event for NXT coming up here you know week and a half two weeks away hashtag dusty classic as well with legato del fantasma and lucha house part of nxt still the split screen commercial for aw dynamite but um it'll now be nxt takeover vengeance day on valentine's day of live reactions pub play live here on youtube so be sure to tune back in uh working with some technical difficulties this week that's why it's you know audio only uh but um Hopefully, come Sunday for the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 55, with uh, the defending Super Bowl 54 champion, Kinsey Chiefs, and Tim Bay Buccaneers. We'll have live reaction to play live here on YouTube of that as well. Uh, so be sure to tune in. The red subscribe button will notify Bell next to it as well. So, Sunday, Super Bowl 55. Week from then, we'll have uh, the now newly uh, renamed next NXT TakeOver event. It'll be WWE NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day. We'll see if they promote any more of that later on throughout the night or not. But um, yeah, we'll have the finals to the Dusty Cup there, it seems like. Uh, and then I would assume a few more championship matches as well, which really should shape up to be a good card then at that point. But we'll see. Um, and then a week from then, uh, it'll be WWE Elimination Chamber. As officially now, we're on the road to WrestleMania, as mentioned, after the Royal Rumble this past Sunday. Uh, and then uh, Revolution early March, WWE Fastlane on Peacock mid-March following WWE Network's move to Peacock. Uh, and then WrestleMania 37 uh, early mid-April, April the 10th and 11th now. And then um, Memorial Day weekend, I assume it'll be uh, double or nothing for the third time in uh, AEW's history. So we go to commercial on WWE NXT in the meantime. While we come back from a split screen commercial on AW Dynamite Beach Break, Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa in singles competition. Nice uh, 
sling blade takedown there from Britt Baker. Cover kick out of two by Thunder Rosa with Reba ringside. But uh, now, hashtag Dusty Classic back from a quick commercial break on NXT. Legato Del Fantasma against Lucha House Party. I assume Del Fantasma is going to win this. Lucha House Party's just floating around. I don't know why the hell they're still signed. But Lucha Libre Wrestling, I mean, here's a here's a damn good tag team match for you tonight on, on WWE NXT, for God's sake. So, And then Santos Escobar, you know, still to come later on with uh, also Undisputed Era, Tomas Ciampa, and Timothy Thatcher in a tag team competition too so a lot going on tonight and that's for damn sure nice uh takedown on the power slam there by baker thunder rosa once again another kick out at two and a half match will continue there are fans in the stands for uh, both these audiences both these shows tonight of course socially distanced but WWE NXT also has the Thunderdome aspect to it too with virtual crowd but hopefully uh, here at some point down the line we'll get back to normal. Hopefully everyone's staying safe. Nice uh, crossbody on the fly from Lucha House Party. Kick out at two and a half. So both these matches are continuing. We've got a rope break and then Thunder Rose a quick roll up on Baker. One, two and a kick out. I mean, I'd be fine with either or. Either of these women uh, picking up the win here. Uh, sort of a fan of, you know, Britt Baker. Uh, being from around where uh, I'm from and currently reside. Uh, and then also, uh, of course, her relationship uh, with uh, Adam Cole, baby. And being a big Adam Cole fan. So, uh, rolling all around now in the ring quick roll ups left and right with both these women now ref doesn't even seem like at least know what the hell to do but uh, Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa and then a nice back body drop by Thunder where's the lightning to potentially pick up the win there's another one cover one two and another Kick out at two and a half there, and she can't believe it. Because whoever wins this, honestly, could be the new face of the women's division that they've, you know, been severely lacking, you know, since uh, as Reba now in the ring. Uh, actually, that was a botch. Come on. Quick roll up from Baker from behind. One, two. Kick out at two and a half. Reba uh, took off the middle turnbuckle in the corner and then Thunder Rose on a reversal. Reba was supposed to go face first and that didn't even come close. Baker then from behind, quick roll up, kick out at two and a half. So match continuing here. But, you know, I'd, I'd like Baker to be the, because I think she has the most potential. Because people know who Thunder Rose is. Like she's a former champion. Baker's really, as she was the first ever woman signed to the company, um, you know, she's the. And then Thunder Rose, okay, she goes face first in the exposed turnbuckle. Baker now going to put the lockjaw in and make Thunder Rose submit against Thunder Rose's night on AEW Dynamite Beach Break in singles competition. After some help from Reba that the ref did not, of course, see. Legato Del Fantasma cover 1-2-3, also picking up the win over Lucha House Party in the meantime as well on WWE. NXT, so very, very good shows tonight with AW Dynamite and WWE NXT. Um, now we've got uh, someone checking in on Thunder Rose, of course, storyline aspect to it, but um, you know, yeah, either of these women really could be the, the future face of the, the women's division. It looks like it's going to be Bert Baker at some point in time, hopefully sooner rather than later because they've They've um, really up until as of late, because of her injuries, I get it. You know, like I said, really haven't done a whole lot with her. I mean, they have, but they haven't. Um, and, you know, just just with circumstances, it it's 
how it goes sometimes. So um, she's now, Thunder Rosa is going to be helped to the back. MSK now making their appearance. Of course, the Rascals. So they're at the top of the entrance. Cutting a promo. We've got Tony Schiavone now backstage in the locker room. This looks like pre-recorded because he was wearing a, a red long sleeve shirt underneath his vest coat, if I'm not mistaken, earlier in the middle of the ring before Darby Allen Sting. Now he's backstage wearing a turquoise colored long sleeve shirt underneath his vest coat interviewing Hangman and Page and Matt Hardy who are in tag team competition tonight on AEW Dynamite as well. So we'll see what happens here. Got a Duff on Tosma. Hey, bring it. Seems like MSK and Duff Osma are going to be uh, facing off against one another in the Dusty Cup. As we now have a Suburban pull up backstage. We got Pete Dunn with uh, Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan get out as well. Burch and Lorcan still your NXT Tag Team Champions. Pete Dunn's been in a story with Finn Balor, who's your NXT champion. That'll be next on NXT. As Pete Dunn with the current NXT champions enter the building. We got a tag team match now set for one fall. Thank you, Justin Roberts. Here comes the Hangman, Hangman Adam Page. Matt Hardy will be next. This match will hopefully not be shit, but cowboy shit. And uh, I'd assume they're going to pick the win. Because uh, like I said, they're really the, the two number one contenders that could potentially take over for the Dark Order. As they've you know been teasing that, of course, since the passing now to the late, great, exalted one, Mr. Brody Lee gone way too soon, but Matt Hardy, the truth is the truth, which isn't honestly any more true, but Big Money Matt on AW Dynamite. Yeah, exactly. That's what I say, JR. We're as live as live can get. They're actually going to take commercial breaks, so technically they're not live anymore. They are, but they're not because they they take us to a commercial. So double commercial break uh, with AEW and WWE NXT. But, yeah, very well, uh, should say, uh, we've, we've had some uh, damn good uh, competition tonight. On both uh, AEW and NXT this evening. Very, very good shows to this point in time. Uh, with, you know, as I look at the clock, about a, another uh, hour and a half or so of both moving forward. Maybe a little less, maybe a little more. We'll see. Uh, but um, now it looks like. And Chompa's growing his hair out, which, of course, he doesn't look right because he's bald. And. With Thatcher, I don't know what the hell he's doing. Warming up with a, I don't know what the hell that was. Honestly, some type of weight. I don't think I've seen anything like that before. Maybe that's something from the middle of the woods where he's uh, from overseas. As Pete Dunn makes his entrance, Pete Dunn with Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan, the Bruiser weight on WWE. NXT will have to see what he has to say here. But uh, then also, we'll come back from AEW Dynamite Beach Break commercial coming up here in a second, and then we'll get more into it uh, as uh, Hangman and Hardy are going to be in tag team competition. But yeah, thus far to this point tonight, very good shows, in my opinion. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Always greatly appreciated. Uh, but, um, yeah, back to Britt Baker and Thunder Rose. It seems like Baker's going to be, at some point, hopefully winning the AW Women's Championship, um, which she absolutely 
deserves. But she'd be, you know, the the true number one first ever um, AEW woman superstar, woman wrestler that was, you know, brought up in house, so to speak. Um, you know, from the ground up, because really before, you know, she was brought in and debuted for the company. I mean, yeah, she wrestled on the independence a little bit, but other than being Adam Cole's girlfriend, nobody knew who the hell she was. And, you know, more power, more credit to AEW then at that point, too, building her up to, you know, what she's become. More power to her, too. More credit to her um, for, you know, the the wrestler she's become, you know, over the past, you know, year and a half, two years or so now. So Finn Balor actually up on the ring apron coming out to Pete Dunn. So Matt Hardy with Hangman Adam Page taking on Chaos Project. Serpentico and Luther from over in the land of the rising sun. So Pete Dunn tells Danny Burch and Ernie Lorcan to get the hell out of the ring. Pete Dunn's in the ring. Finn Balor's in the ring. Balor, of course, has the NXT title over his shoulder. It seems like they're going to face off at the next TakeOver event for that very title faced off a little over a month ago now at New Year's Evil. However, now NXT has become Rated R. Here comes the Rated R Superstar this year's Royal Rumble winner and Adam Copeland Edge with his very wife Beth Phoenix on the call on commentary ringside with Vic Joseph and Bad News Wade Barrett. So Edge now in the ring with Finn Balor and Pete Dunne on WWE NXT. As on AEW Dynamite, we got Hangman Adam Page tagging in Matt Hardy as he takes his shirt off as they're in tag team competition against Chaos Project on Dynamite Beach Break this evening. Edge now, all right, on the mic. Gonna tease here, it seems like. Uh, hey, yeah, Finn Balor. I could face you, maybe. I could face Pete Dunne. Whoever the hell the NXT champion is, come WrestleMania, I might want to face uh, you for that very title and uh, make NXT better than you know what it currently is. Make it rated R. So, yeah, very good shows tonight, I've thought. Coming uh, a few days after Royal Rumble 2021 on the road as mentioned to TakeOver and Revolution on the road to Wrestlemania and Double or Nothing hard to believe you know next month now as we enter February March of 2020 was the last time because it's going to be a year since things were normal and hopefully we'll get back to normal sometime soon but the last time we had real live fans in the stands in the crowd for you know, events whether it be baseball, basketball, football you name it, whatever and that includes professional wrestling hockey, you know, list goes on and on boxing's been um, coming back very strong here as of late, MMA with the UFC and Bellator, but yeah, you name it uh, even NASCAR for God's sakes uh, as Daytona 500s in a few weeks, so their new season is going to kick off uh, strong as it always does with the Great American Race. But um, yeah, hard to believe. Come this time next month, it'll be a year since things were normal. And I mean, March is a, a month away. Still thinking about last March for God's sakes, because that's when things were normal. And that, was, that was the last time I was mentioned. We had fans in the stands, but you know we're getting through and um, at some point in time hopefully we'll get back to normal but I don't even know where I was going with that honestly but just I mean even with some fans back in the stands limited capacity of course it's not the same and it never will be until things get back to the way we know things to be and you know spell it out for you at uh, normal so 
yeah, that that is what it is. But uh, that was a quick tag team match. Hangman and Page and Matt Hardy picking up the win over Chaos Project tonight on AEW Dynamite Beach Break. And then uh, Edge staring down Finn Balor and Pete Dunne on NXT. All right, now we got some news on the Women's World Championship Eliminator Tournament on AEW. Okay, they're going to have matches in the U.S. and Japan. How the hell is that going to work? Are they teaming up now with New Japan Pro Wrestling, for God's sakes? So they're going to have... And they've uh, teased this women's tournament for quite a while, I, I thought. Um, but they never really did anything with it. I could be wrong. But they're announcing competitors for this uh, AW All Elite Wrestling Women's World Championship Eliminator Tournament. And, of course, the winner will uh, become the new number one contender. Johnny Gargano interviewed backstage on WWE NXT. However, in the meantime, we're invited to the wedding of Penelope and Kip. Kip Sabian Penelope Ford with the best man Miro and his butler, and Chucky T, Chuck Taylor, as uh, old Trent Breda is um, out with an injury. So, uh, yeah. Best Man Mero, happy Mero Day, everyone. I'm sure he, as he's involved in another wedding segment, he'll steal a show. Uh, but, yeah, we're going to have the wedding of Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford. When we return to AEW Dynamite, as uh, in the meantime, we hit once again another double commercial with both AEW and NXT this evening. So um, I'll digress with uh, what I've been saying uh, throughout the night. But um, once again, just thank you for tuning in, as always, and uh, listening. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe, as always, on social media. Links in the description below. Thumbs up button once more. Share hashtag AEW. Hashtag WWE NXT. Chat questions and comments. Super chats, super stickers. Always greatly appreciated as well. Hopefully we'll tune in on Sunday for Super Bowl 55 in the NFL as the football season will come to an end officially. Uh, and then a week from then, the now newly renamed, once again, next WWE NXT TakeOver event. It'll be WWE NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day on Valentine's Day, Elimination Chamber then a week from then. Uh, and then... Um, end of the off season for football of course uh we'll have combine which of course isn't going to be uh the same this year that officially canceled but everything taking place uh pro days for everyone involved in the upcoming draft uh and then free agency mid-march kick off the nfl new year but um around that same time as well you know revolution We've got Elimination Chamber, still on the road to WrestleMania, uh, NFL Draft, then end of April into early May, um, and then you know from from then until as we'll have wrestling, you know, as we always do year round, it'll be the long you know dog days of summer, and you know that's of course on the road until we get to next football season, which will be here before we know it, but. Um, yeah, just be sure to hit that red subscribe button. We'll notify bell next to it uh, as well. Stay up to date, get notified. But um, yeah, just be sure to uh, hopefully tune back in. And yeah, sorry for any technical difficulties by any means. Yeah, audio only, live reactions play play once again. But hey, it is what it is. There's only so much I can do. We've got Johnny Gargano now back on NXT, walking uh, backstage. He. Uh, Goes and knocks on William Regal's door and Kushida answers. And now we got uh, Alex Marvez interviewing Jericho and MJF as they're about to celebrate. Looks like without a cooler. They say they're going to become the new AEW World Tag Team Champions. 
They then enter the... And there's the TV. It's on tape delay, of course. The promo that just happened airing on the TV in the same very room that they're in now as uh, Jericho and MJF enter with the rest of the inner circle backstage. Uh, Kushida actually just took out Gargano in the hallway in the WWPC, the New Capital Wrestling Center in Orlando. We're just north in Jacksonville for AEW. So, Sammy Guevara walking out on the uh, inner circle. However, they're going to celebrate. There's a full uh, cooler there of some ice cold beverages, it looks like. They then turn the TV off after they notice it, like a minute or two late. And then Wardlow going to walk out, actually just going to shut the door in the uh, cameraman's face. So no more exclusive access. Tony Storm making her entrance on NXT. However, it is now time... We are invited to Kip Sabe and Penelope Ford's wedding. We got a wedding ceremony once again in the world of professional wrestling. We all know these things never end well, so we'll see what happens coming up next. But they pan to JR and Excalibur on commentary first. And uh, they say it's going to be one of the best weddings ever. It'll be Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford. With best man Miro, formerly known, of course, as Rusev in the WWE. Happy Miro Day, everyone. But Kip Sabian, Penelope Ford, Miro, and then the butler in Chuck T. Because with best friends, Trent Beretta injured, keep him on TV, they really don't have anything else for him to do. And it, it makes sense to run wise because Rusev's right now sort of in a, in a story with, you know, Orange Cassidy of best friends. So. Um, Shivani now backstage interviewing the groom, Kip Sabian, who is in a tux with a bow tie. We got Rusev in the middle, uh, wearing his groomsman best man outfit. Uh, and then Chuck T as, uh, the butler himself has a towel over his left arm, walks off. And now we got some wedding music. I have a feeling this is going to be funny. Who is going Who is going to be uh, in charge of this wedding? Who's going to be officiating? Who the hell is that? Michael Buffer, Bruce Buffer. Let's get ready to rumble. Hopefully it's not uh, um, who WWE's called in for weddings in the past. Along with, and why the hell is Vicky Guerrero walking Kip Sabian out? Like, what the hell does she have to do with this? It makes no sense. Alright, so Vicky Guerrero. Is that, uh, that's not, what's his name? It's not Jeff Ross, is it? Sure, so it looks like it. Jesus Christ. All right, so we got Kip Sabian in the ring as he was uh, brought down by Vicky Guerrero for some unknown reason. I don't know why. Uh, and then Mira's by his side with uh, Chuck T, Chuck Taylor. Now here comes the beautiful bride and Penelope Ford. Now I don't know if that's her real life. No, that's what's his name. Shit, that's not her dad. That's, uh, oh, uh, drawing a blank on a few names tonight um that's a backstage producer for AEW um and yeah that's an old school wrestler as well who's officiating uh anyone else is watching this and does in fact know the names of these people let me know I'm drawing a blank right now I, I guess I must be you know too excited for what the hell is about to happen with Miro and another wedding segment because the last one that he was involved in with uh, Bobby Lashley and Lana uh, just after Christmas last year, over a year and a half ago now. Um, of course, he popped out of the cake. That, I mean, I tell you what, that was hilarious. So I just have a feeling something very 
stupid funny is about to happen, so we'll see. But uh, we got uh, the wedding of uh, Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford on AEW Dynamite Beach Break. As they're in the middle of the ring and we're going to celebrate uh, the love of uh, Kip and uh, Penelope. Mira there, the best man. Why doesn't she have any bridesmaids? Kip gets a best man in Miro, which of course is his gimmick. And then Chuck T is there as the butler. But Penelope doesn't get any bridesmaids. I mean, where the hell did Vicky Guerrero go? She brought down Kip for God's sake. Why didn't she stand over there? So now, as they give uh, Kip the mic... A one-piece with knee-high boots is, of course, Penelope's in-ring gear. That's what he's talking about. Uh, Miro from uh, behind looking on as, you know, your typical best man would before he... Who has the rings, you know, and then who the hell's giving her away and all that bullshit. Kip tells Penelope that he loves her. And now here comes uh, Penelope going to give her uh, vows to Kip. They lower the mic for her. And um, I have a feeling Miro might turn on Kip. But with Chuck T still as the butler and the feud with best friends not even near over because of injury. They would be smart to hold, probably hold off and wait, but in the meantime, I mean, why the hell not team Miro up with uh, Chuck T and Orange Cassidy, okay, and have Miro join best friends, maybe. Butler, Chuck T with the rings. He hands those off to Miro. And then Miro hands him off to Kip Sabian. Cameron Grimes is going to return next week on NXT. As uh, Santos so Escobar is about to defend his Cruiserweight title against Kurt Stallion. Kip, do you take Penelope Ford to be your awfully wedded wife? Yes, I do. Penelope, vice versa, same thing. Yes, I do. What the hell? Kayfabing audience? As long as you both shall live, I do. So he puts the wedding ring on her ring finger. Of course, the one on your left hand in between your pinky and middle finger, if you did not know. Kip is dashing. And sickness and in health. Richer and poorer, I'm sure, are going to be poor anytime soon. I'll be making money with AEW. She says, I do. And she puts his wedding band on. Before we move forward, if there is anyone, if there is anybody who'd like to object, now, now's the time to do so. Or forever hold your peace. Mero cuts him off. Mero on the mic now. And Mero's like, no, speed this process up. Speed this wedding up. Let's get these two married without anything happening. Because we all know how wrestling weddings are. They never end well. By AEW Dynamite, I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. And Kip's got a ball and chain and Penelope Ford now, so they say. They make out on national TV. Let's hear it for the newlyweds. A round of applause for Kip and Penelope. What the hell is going to happen next? Because nothing as of yet has.
We're now going to join the best man, Miro, and a toast for the newlyweds. All right, so we're going to have the wedding and the reception all at the same time. Why the hell not? They're short on time. It's only a two-hour show, for God's sakes. And uh, Miro telling his butler and Chuck Taylor to get the champagne ready. Miro with a glass. He hands out to Penelope. Gives another one to Chuck T. Or actually, he uh, <laughs> he drinks Chuck Taylor's. <laughs> gives one to uh, Kip and then grabs one for himself. So uh, Miro boozing it up on AEW Dynamite during this wedding. What is love? That's a good question. What is love? Miro's got a present for Kip and Penelope. What's the present going to be? My power is your present. Is Mira going to turn on Kip right now? And they have a box in the corner that's wrapped up. And actually, that's from Chuck T. So Chuck Taylor got him a gift. So what's the wedding gift in the box going to be? Bruce have seen, Mira's seen plenty of surprises during weddings. And he, 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 like, tackles it, acting as if there's somebody in it, but there's nothing in the box. All right. Yeah, it's pretty funny. But probably not as funny as what's about to happen because there is a cake also in the middle of the ring. And, uh, yeah, Miro Rusev jumped out of the cake uh, the last wedding he was involved in on Monday Night Raw with Lashley and Lana. That was doomed from the start. What is love, says Miro? Once again, another good question. Crowd starting to chant something. Oh, they're singing what is love. And then Miro starts singing along with them. Oh, my. Don't hurt me no more. That's enough, Miro. Let's move on, yeah. Let's get some cake. And then Miro trips over something in the middle of the ring. Oh, he's actually uh, chained to the to the ring post as uh, Penelope just went uh, face first into the cake as Chuck T pushed Kip into her and then Kip with a right hand to Miro so there's planted seeds for a potential feud with them for Miro to turn on eventually at some point but speaking of a ball and chain I mean Rusev's chained up can't move and that that allowed Chuck T to get it on with Kip and have Kip accidentally push Penelope into the cake and now Kip attacking. <laughs> oh my. Orange Cassidy just popped out of the cake. Orange Cassidy just did what Miro did last wedding. Popped up out of the middle of the cake. That's funny. And Miro's chained up. He can't do a damn thing about it. So best friends having their way on Kip and Penelope's wedding day. Attacking the bride and groom. And Best Friends music hits. We'll see if Chuck T is going to be the butler to Miro moving forward or not. Probably not. They're going to drink all the champagne they can drink. That was pretty funny. So yeah, Kip and Chuck were going at it then. And then Miro still can't do anything about it. He's chained up. Penelope Ford got out of the way, and then Orange Cassidy just popped up out of the center of the cake. Exactly what Miro did, Rusev, during Bobby Lashley and Lana's wedding. Um, that was pretty funny. That was pretty funny. I, I wasn't expecting 
uh, even though, you know, I did mention there, maybe, you know, something will happen with the cake because it's still sitting there. They haven't touched it yet. And then they did get to it. But, I mean, it fits Orange Cassidy just with his persona, his character. He really doesn't say or do much. He does, but he doesn't. Um, like, if you know, you know. But, um sort of was but wasn't expecting him to come out of the center of the cake maybe come out of the entrance but not not out up out of the center of the cake knowing hey Rusev already did that but why not revisit it and that's what they did so I thought that was really good that was funny that was I mean it didn't end well I mean it did but it didn't because they did get married okay technically they are married in real life now but um all the action that normally would happen before you know the wedding would end happened after they're officially you know man and wife so um, they waited until afterwards which is a a good different way to go because you know normally it, it's always well let's get all the action out before uh, before this ends and and a little shock too. I mean, okay, nine o'clock hour. Um, that that wasn't the main event, but we still have Omega and the Good Brothers taking on Moxley, Pac, and one half of the Lucha Brothers as well. So that, of course, is going to be your main event of the evening. Uh, but um, they take a split screen commercial in the meantime, clean up uh, the ring for. Uh, or following the Kip and Penelope wedding. Now, AEW Dynamite Arena for their virtual experience as on uh, WWE NXT right now. We got Santos Escobar and Kurt Stallion in action for the Cruiserweight title. And then out of nowhere, Scarlet, she appears, she pops up... Uh, up on the top turnbuckle it looks like there or maybe actually um, up on the landing like off into the distance where they have um, the lookout for NXT yeah that's where she's at and Penelope and Scarlet look very very similar they look a lot alike I just really honestly for the first time noticed that for some reason I don't know why but um, yeah, we'll see what happens moving forward now with uh, Kip and Miro and then best friends sort of getting back together but they, they have the wedding they get married but then best friends they, they stand tall and um, take out Kip and uh, actually just Kip because Miro was he was tied up he was chained uh, to the corner, couldn't move, and that's you know why all that happened then, because he didn't, he couldn't do a damn thing about it. AW Dynamite Beach Break last Thursday we got Shaq. Shaq currently right now in a, in a feud with Cody Rhodes, and we'll see if they get a, a match at some point, potential tag team match. Of course, Brandy pregnant, you know, she's not going to be involved, but um, you know they have uh, Jade Cargill and um, a few other uh, wrestlers who uh, could team with, with Cody. And this goes back to the waiting room uh, segment with uh, Brett Baker when she had uh, Cody Rhodes on as a guest. And Shaq saying he's going to do it. Shaq going to uh, take on Cody. And then Shaq going to demonstrate here on what he's going to do to Cody Rhodes. Of course, there's glass on the set in between everyone socially distanced. Shaq with a big right hand, but this is on uh, inside the NBA. So, okay, live Wednesday, March the 3rd. So this won't be at Revolution. It'll be on AEW Dynamite. It'll be Shaq. And Jade Cargill taking on Cody Rhodes and Red Velvet. That should be a good match. Of course, 
superstar that Shaq is, it's going to bring in an audience that's not used to pro wrestling. But Shaq's been involved with pro wrestling, you know, numerous times in the past. So first time, though, however, with AEW, but with the connection, of course, AEW with Turner with TNT and then, you know, Shaq working for TNT as well. It makes sense. However, next, we got Eddie Kingston and Lance Archer in singles competition. Bell rings, matching away right off the bat. Very quick entrance for both. Big uh, boot there from Lance Archer as uh, we have the gun club, it looks like, ringside. What is this, a lumberjack match? Oh, yeah, it is a lumberjack match. All right. Okay, they just announced that. So Jake the Snake Roberts, of course, there as well, managing Lance Archer. But this is a, officially a lumberjack match. Eddie Kingston and Lance Archer. As uh, Archer now ringside, taking out, there's Peter Avalon into the post. Butcher and Blade with uh, AW's Bad Bunny. I tell you what, that musical performance with Booker T was awful. So bad. And then they had him on Raw Monday night, for God's sakes. Like, come on. And it seems like they might be doing something with him on the road to Mania or even at WrestleMania, for God's sakes. Like, if Bad Bunny's the best you can do right now, like, give me a goddamn break. Jesus Christ. All right, Lumberjack match with Kingston and Archer as Archer just threw Kingston ringside. But then Kingston taking out uh, a few of the Lumberjacks now. There's flying Brian Pillman Jr. Griff Garrison. Who the fuck is Griff Garrison? <laughs> and then Lance Archer over the top rope taking out everyone. So Lance Archer and Eddie Kingston in a Lumberjack match on AEW Dynamite. They had a Lumberjack match over the summer with Speaking of Wardlow and Luchasaurus, weren't those two in a Lumberjack match? Back, what was that, Fighter Fest, Fight for the Fallen? Or right before that? Yeah, I'd say so. They take a split-screen commercial on AW Dynamite. In the meantime, Santos Escobar picks up the win and retains his Cruiserweight title over Kurt Stallion. We had Scarlett on that lookout the whole entire match, for most of it at least. Um... Here comes Karrion Cross, who's looking pretty good. He's coming face to face with Santos Escobar. What are they going to have? Karrion Cross win the cruiserweight title, or the cruiserweight title is supposed to be for superstars, you know, on two or five live, two hundred five pounds or lighter. Not Karrion Cross, who's six five, two seventy. Like, come on. But now face to face, Karrion Cross and Santos Escobar. It seems like Cross is just in a holding pattern since he returned from injury. I mean, what, faced off against Priest a month ago at New Year's Evil. Priest now up on the main roster, debuting on Sunday at the Royal Rumble. In the Rumble match, was on Rama tonight, so he's going to be up on the main roster now, it looks like. Um, you know, Cross was NXT champion, beat Keith Lee at TakeOver 30 SummerSlam weekend, got injured, dropped the title to Finn Balor. Well, he just relinquished the title, and then they had their fiddle four away and then singles competition. Uh, with the championship match on those were what the Super Tuesday episodes of NXT in September you had Cole Balor Ciampa and Gargano and then uh, Cole and Balor with Balor winning and Finn's been champ since and then Cross returned and you know with Finn in a story right now with Pete Dunne circle back around well okay what do we do with Karrion Cross? well it seems like they're going to have him against Santos Escobar, for God's sakes. Like, how does that make any sense? I don't know, but it, it's what they're doing. At least what they just did, at least. Um, probably just to make him look strong, though, too, in the meantime. Until after the takeover on Valentine's Day, Vengeance Day. So, and then maybe the next takeover, if they're even going to have another takeover before Mania... Or even after, but if you're going to have a takeover around Mania, well, you might as well have maybe one or two NXT matches on WrestleMania. But at the same time, probably 
don't want to do that. Keep NXT separate. But we'll see what they do. It all really just depends on how they're going to book it. And, you know, as I always say, whatever they're, you know, doing, whatever they want to do, they'll do, regardless of what we, you know, say. Because they know we're going to still tune in and watch. But, however, next on NXT, it'll be uh, Cole and Strong, the Undisputed Era, against Chomp and Thatcher in the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic on WWE NXT. I do believe, in fact, that's the main event. So, NXT, uh, with these quick commercial breaks and a lot of action, or even vice versa, um, you know seems to be going to be uh, closing a little earlier than AEW for some reason on my end at least I don't know why that'd be but we'll see how the rest of the night goes here back from split screen on AEW with Archer and Kingston in a lumberjack match once more and then we'll have probably another match or segment or two before the main event with maybe even more than that I don't know we'll see with um, Mox, Pac and Ray Phoenix with Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers Archer cover one two and a kick out we now got Edge backstage he's going to exit the building and then he turns around, he's got a cameraman in his face, ask him a few questions. So Edge, he'll probably go now to, oh actually shit, they have Cross walk up to Edge back uh, stage actually outside. Potentially teasing a feud there with Edge and Cross. But then Edge will probably show up on SmackDown because if he's on Raw Mondays on NXT tonight, he's going to be on SmackDown either this week or at some point down the line. There's AEW's Bad Bunny with the Butcher and Blade. We got the Gun Club. Who else we got ringside in the Slumberjack match? There's Jake the Snake Roberts. Jake the Snake just uh, took out uh, the Hybrid 2, it looks like. Which I don't think Jake the Snake Roberts has gotten physical in pro wrestling in, shit, probably 10, 15, 20, 25 years, for God's sakes. At least physical like that. All right, NXT, they announced for NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day, make it official for the NXT Championship. It'll be Finn Balor and Pete Dunne. That should be a damn good match. Also, NXT TakeOver. NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day on Valentine's Day, the NXT Women's Championship. Io Shirai defending against Tony Storm and Mercedes Martinez. Also, Johnny Gargano and Kushida for the NXT North American title. That should be a damn good match, too. Jeez. Plus, they'll have the um, Dusty Reds Tag Team Classic Finals, too, right? So, there's your five matches for TakeOver. So, they'll have another week to build. Week and a half away. Uh, and Go Home will be next Wednesday, of course. And then, on that following Sunday, a week from Sunday... NXT TakeOver, Vengeance Day, as the Undisputed Era makes their appearance tonight on NXT. Lumberjack match continues with AW Dynamite, Lance Archer, Eddie Kingston once more. Kingston off the top rope. Archer going to grab him for a choke slam. Note on the reversal. There's a table set up in the middle of the ring now as well. Actually, it's on its top on the bottom of the mat. And then Archer with a big power slam cover one, two, three on Eddie Kingston in a somewhat fairly quick, um, even with a split screen commercial, um, Lumberjack match tonight on AEW Dynamite. They actually had this match last week on AEW. Um, however, there was technical difficulties at the start of the show. Um, and then Tony Khan made it official that, hey, we're going to have a rematch just so everyone gets another chance to see it. Adam Cole, Bebe on NXT, 
making his entrance after the boom. But Adam Cole, Bebe, the Undisputed Era, about to take on Ciampa and Thatcher in the Dusty Cup. But uh, yeah, Khan, Tony Khan, send for the Khan, uh, made the announcement, hey, we're going to have a rematch with these two, and we're going to make a Lumberjack match, which, of course, we just saw. So uh, FTR now backstage with Tully Blanchard. They're actually just suspended for uh, a week or two, maybe indefinitely. Uh, by AEW uh, for uh, some recent actions of theirs on AEW, but the revelation we're going to fear the revelation FTR, revival if you will um, FTR, F the rest at first but fear the revelation is FTR in AEW with uh, Dax and Cash and Tully Blanchard shout Sean Spears, where the hell you been but it's a good thing that Telly's not doing both. Here comes uh, Chomp and Thatcher. What does it take to face off against the best tag team in wrestling? Says Telly Blanchard. Telly managing FTR in AEW. And then they, they uh, bring in, uh, who's that, Marcus Stunt? They're holding him captive. They've got him chained to a chair and his mouth is duct taped. Are they in uh, somebody's basement? Are we in a scary movie right now? Up next on AEW Dynamite, it'll be the main event of Beach Break. Kenny Omega with the Good Brothers, Gals and Anderson, taking on Moxley, Pock, and Phoenix in a six-man tag main event. However, with Undisputed Era, with Ciampa and Thatcher, they lock up. It's currently Adam Cole and Tommaso Ciampa. Thatcher, they're on the ring apron, holding the rope, waiting to tag in. Ciampa with a big... Uh, Shorter tackle off the ribs. Doesn't look right with his new hairdo and his hair grow out, but sort of a new look for him, you know. I get it. Change it up. Nice takedown there then on Adam Cole. So Cole and uh, Ciampa working right now, but yeah, I don't know what the hell that was supposed to be with um, FTR and Marcus. And other than, of course, that's sort of why FTR was suspended because of uh, they threw something at uh, Jurassic Express just recently, and that's why they got suspended. So they, they kidnap um, Marco Stunt there, it looks like, and have him chained and tied up. Um, but just a, a simple, you know, promo backstage, and um, they sort of just end that all of a sudden. And hey, up next, our main event of the evening. So. Um, both main events going to be going on here at the same time as they always do, but um, NXT is underway first, on my end at least, right now, with uh, the Undisputed Era, Adam Cole, and Roderick Strong, with Tommaso Ciampa and Timothy Thatcher. That's WWE NXT. A match in the Dusty Reds Tag Team Classic. And then on AEW Dynamite, a beach break edition this evening. We'll have the main event of the evening as well coming up next with Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers, the Big LG, Luke Doc Gallows, Sex Ferguson, if you will, with Chad Too Bad, Machine Gun, Carl Anderson, as they'll take on the trio of Moxley, Pock, and one half of the Lucha Brothers. WWE NXT next week in the semis of the Dusty Cup. Legato Del Fantasma versus MSK. So the semis is next week. Uh, and then the finals a few days later. NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day. Gonna have to get a little used to saying Vengeance Day because... On Valentine's Day, you don't want to, of course, get those mixed up, confused, but the Vengeance pay-per-view is always just Vengeance. It wasn't Vengeance Day, it was just Vengeance, you know. 
but they last summer brought back Great American Bash. Uh, now it's you know Vengeance. They had In Your House as well. Um, of course, War Games, but uh, along with Halloween Havoc too. But um, NXT. I mean, I mean, why the hell not? I mean. Triple H talking with Vince. Yeah, Vince, what the hell? Do it. I don't care. That's sort of how it is. Just to spice it up. Because AEW with the TV specials, with their their four pay-per-views throughout the year. I mean, WWEs are actual strict pay-per-views. Other than Halloween Havoc, which was um, on a NXT episode throughout the week. Because Halloween was on a Saturday. And TakeOver events have now officially moved to full-blown Sundays as they when they first started them it was always Saturdays and then they sort of flip-flopped and they've settled on Sunday since but now next week on AEW as they announced earlier um, it'll be Darby Allen versus Joey Janela also Jericho and MJF versus The Acclaimed and then Cody Rhodes with LJ Lee Johnson versus uh, Peter picked a pick of however the hell that goes pretty Peter Avalon and someone else so um, yeah, Avalon no longer a librarian but hey at least he's going to be on Dynamite I don't remember last time Peter Avalon was on AW in a match like he was on earlier with uh, the Lumberjack match but Actually, in a wrestling match on Dynamite, last time Peter Avalon was in that, I have no clue. It's been forever. Here comes Omega. Justin Roberts doing his best entrance form, as he always does. The cleaner, Kenny Omega, with Gals and Anderson. Don Callis by their side as well, but it'll be Omega as your AW World Champion. Gals and Anderson, your current TNA Impact Tag Team Champions. Taking on Moxley, who's in a feud right now with Omega for that AEW World title. And then uh, Pac with Ray Phoenix. Ray Phoenix, of course, of the Lucha Brothers. But um, you have... Okay, they're going to fade to black, take a commercial break, as Don Callis is going to cut a promo to the crowd, but we're not going to get to see it on TV. What the hell? Like, I get that happens. It's happened, you know, when I've been to shows before, as it always does, but you know, wait a second so people at home know that, hey, you're not missing anything, yet you're going to cut a promo in the meantime. Don Callis doing Don Callis things, I tell you what. No, but... Um, the Death Triangle with Pac and the Lucha Brothers. And then you have Kingston and Butcher and Blade going back to their feuds. Um, of course, with Ray Phoenix involved um, in this uh, six-man tag team main event match on AEW Dynamite Beach Break with Pac and Mox against Omega and Gals and Anderson. That only means, and it's true to an extent, that um, the other half of the Lucha Brothers uh, in, uh, what's his name, John a Blank, with names tonight, uh, for some reason, don't know why, uh, is in fact injured. Um, so yeah, the Lucha Brothers who are, let's see if I can regain control here and make up uh, for uh, anything that I've forgotten this evening. Um, as mentioned, I really haven't watched a whole lot of AW or NXT the past week or so, past two weeks. Um, but uh, Beach Break, WWE NXT, you know, why the hell not? I've done the others, but um, why am I not remembering who the hell is the Lucha Brothers? Well, really, honestly, it's probably because they've changed his name a few too many times uh, as of late and I'm I'm trying to think of his original name but then in the meantime I'm also trying to think of his new name and I'm thinking too much 
So if anybody does in fact know, let me know in the comments. I'll think of it hopefully by the end of the night, potentially with some help from the commentary uh, team once we come back on AEW Dynamite this evening. Uh, but, um, yeah. So, I mean, regardless, it really doesn't matter. I'm just, you know, of course, I should know. Um, but uh, this should be a damn good uh, main event match with uh, Omega and the Good Brothers. I mean, anything Omega touches is going to be gold anyway. So, as he is holding gold, you know, his AW World title uh, that he uh, won against Moxley two months ago now. And then the, the partnership with AEW and Impact since Sting debuted, you know, the same night as well as mentioned. But um, Cal is going to be on commentary with JR, Excalibur, and Shivani for this main event match as uh, Mox, Pac, and Phoenix will make their entrance. So, Undisputed Era, Chomp, and Thatcher. Another kick out in that main event match. Yeah, the Death Triangle. Neville, Pac, Pac, however you want to say it. With Ray Phoenix. And then Moxley going to come out from the back as he has always made a different type of entrance of course but he's like let's go they're going to walk down the ramp and Justin Roberts going ham with the entrances John Moxley as he holds Omega for 10,000 minutes as well with the Omega but uh, no this should be a good uh, good tag team main event match we got a regular tag team match on NXT in the main event we got a six man tag team match in the main event on AEW as well so I'll shut up with previewing this and we'll, we'll get to it. I mean, I would think Omega and the Good Brothers are going to win this. And then, you know, Moxley is going to get Omega for the title at Revolution probably again anyway, so... And especially with, with the partnership AW and Impact have, I mean, it, it, it drags the stories out and it it makes a good build. You know, it keeps you on the edge of your seat and makes you want to, you know, tune back in and continue to watch. Close line from Adam Cole. And a big boot then from Cole to Ciampa. Going to kick Thatcher off the ring apron as well. And then uh, a nice backstabber in the middle of the ring. Cover one, two, kick out by... TC Bell rings match underway It's Carl Anderson and Pac On AEW So A little time difference here With A main event match beginning And then a potential main event match ending here Coming up shortly With WWE NXT Cole with a cover One, two and another kick out as Thatcher tries to break it up, but can barely even get back up on the ring apron, for God's sakes. Doc Galloway did uh, Drew McIntyre, Drew Galloway, Luke, Doc Gallows have a kid, and then Tony Schiavone came up with the name. Doc Gallows, Luke Gallows. Not Doc Galloway. I I get it. I've done shit like that before. It, it's not that hard to do, honestly, while you're talking. But Moxley tags in. Gallows tags in. And, I mean, really with the partnership AEW and Impact have right now with, you know, Gallows and Anderson for the most part being really the only ones on AEW... AW sent some to Impact, but um, 
you know, what's the future hold for Talking Shop of Mania? You know, are we going to get a Talking Shop of Mania 3 at some point, you know, by April, May, June? Or is it only going to be August and November as it was this past year? Or only really, are we only ever going to get the first two ever Talking Shop of Manias and be done with it? Even though, you know, they had success. We'll see. Future going to be bright for, you know, everything here anyway, so... Kick out by Roderick Strong. Big hit there on the slap from Thatcher. Pock going to go up top. Omega from behind. Ref doesn't see any of this. As Aubrey Edwards is tending to Carl Anderson. And then as Omega held Pock down up top, Gallows came in, beat shit out of him. And then Pock down. Carl Anderson throwing him in the corner. Tag made. Here comes Kenny Omega. And Moxley telling Aubrey Edwards, hey, what the hell? Another tag made. Gal is in. Legal. Against Pac again. And another quick tag. Here comes Carl Anderson. So back and forth. And they zoom in with the camera shot. Another tag made. Kenny Omega legal. Omega and Pac. I mean, they've teased those two going at it for the title. But it, it seems like, like I said, you know, after Moxley dropped it two months ago, oh, big suplex there off the ropes from Pac to Kenny Omega. Normally it's the other way around with those uh, Snapdragon suplexes. Their tag made. Uh, Omega going to tag in. Carl Anderson is uh, Moxley tags in as well. Kicks from Mox to Machine Gun in the corner. But it, it seems like it's going to be Omega and Moxley at Revolution. But they could go, um, you know, Pac potentially screwing shit up and go Omega, Pac for the title at some point. Omega's going to be holding this AEW World title, though, for a long time. Probably, I would think, a good year. I mean, hell, if Moxley held the title for almost a year after Jericho held it for, what, six, eight, nine months? Because you go back to Revolution last year after the previous August when Jericho won it. Jericho held it from August to last February. And then Mox held it from February until just December. And Omega's now held it for two months. Omega, yeah, he's going to be champion for probably a good... 12, 14, 16 months. If not longer, probably. But it's just going to depend on how they build everyone else up in the meantime. And I mean, if there's a true cut, clear number one contender that they think can take the title off them and make sense, okay, so be it. It, it only, you know, has to make sense. As Ciampa pins Roderick Strong, 1, 2, 3. Ciampa and Thatcher with the win on WWE NXT over the Undisputed Era in the Dusty Rose Tag Team Classic to close out WWE NXT this evening. However, in the meantime, a split-screen commercial on AEW Dynamite. So we'll come back for the finish here momentarily. Just want to say thank you once again for tuning in and listening. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe as always on social media. Links in the description below. Audio-only recording once again for live reactions to play this evening, unfortunately, due to some Technical difficulties with YouTube here uh, this week, but we'll get back to normal here hopefully soon. But uh, it'll be Chompa and Thatcher taking on the grizzled young veterans in the semis. And then on the other side of the bracket, as mentioned earlier, as both semis will now be next week before the finals on the following Sunday, NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day, it'll be Legado Del Fantasma and MSK. So, Probably Chomp and Thatcher and MSK in the finals, I would think. I mean, you you can have four different scenarios, though, with either of these four teams making to the finals and winning. But, I mean, right now, I would I would have to think that's my pick for the finals with Chompa and Thatcher then probably winning. And then if they lose... Say to MSK, who NXT's high on right now for the tag team division. Because then MSK could take on um, 
or even Chomp and Thatcher as they hit the closing credits, they'll take on Birch and Lorcan for the tag team titles afterwards. But you have MSK become new NXT tag team champions, and then you have Chomp and Thatcher continue to feud. As all hell breaks loose at the top of the stage as they fade to black for the closing of NXT this evening, Chompa and Thatcher attacking the Grizzled Young Veterans as they came out face-to-face, hyping up the match for next week. Back to AEW. We got Gallows and Moxley, so we'll see what happens there with, with NXT. I mean, it'll be exciting. But, you know, whoever wins the two semis then next week will face off in the finals, and then we'll, we'll get more into that, you know, then. Because we'll have a clear picture. But, I mean, I would think it's going to be Chompa and Thatcher uh, with MSK. And then, you know, may the best tag team win at that point. And then either or which direction they choose to go, there's there's options. I think the best bet would be MSK winning the tag team classic. Um, and then have Chomp and Thatcher continue feud because then you have new tag team champions after MSK defeats Birch and Lorcan. And then you have Balor and Pete Dunne right now as well for the NXT Championship during that takeover event as well. So a lot to figure out in the near future, but just be sure to tune back in live right here on YouTube for more live reactions to play, play of college football, the NFL, and professional wrestling uh, for the most part. And now moving forward, just pro wrestling from now until the uh, start of football season next year. But we'll have football videos uh, in the meantime. But Ray Phoenix now with Kenny Omega. Omega with a power bomb now. Phoenix on the reversal with a super kick of his own. Here comes Pac off the top rope with a drop kick to Kenny Omega. And then Pac telling Phoenix, hey, let's get up top. Maybe, a, oh, they're going to take out uh, the Good Brothers ringside uh, with some moon salts. And then Phoenix off the top rope with another ring. Going to roll through and then a stunner to Kenny Omega. Cover on KO. One, two, kick out. Okay. We got Omega up on Phoenix's shoulders and then now chops right to the chest of both competitors. Right hand to the gut. Phoenix off the top rope. And then a, a low blow from Omega to Phoenix with the ropes. Uh, and then a, a suplex hitting... Uh, Phoenix hard on the back of the neck. And then Omega tags in Gallows. Gallows with a big boot. Gallows with a cover on Ray Phoenix. Cover one, two, kick out at two and a half. Pock up on the ring apron. Looking to tag. Moxley, I don't know where the hell he went. Tag is made. Pock tags himself in. Gallows doesn't see it. Pock and Gallows going at it. Some kicks. And then a drop kick to the knee. And now a cover one, two, and a kick out. And then a super kick from Gallows. Tags in Carl Anderson. And Kenny Omega goes in as well. Pock into the corner. Omega from behind with a kick. They're all in the corner now, taking out Pock. Pock off the. Actually, just got uh, a triple neck breaker given into him. And then Moxley breaks up the count. Okay, so this match continues. And then uh, now Moxley. 
as he rolls out ringside Omega in the middle of the ring with a big power bomb to Pac. Kenny Omega, no, not so fast. And then Kenny Omega off the ropes with the big knee. Now going to go for another suplex here. Or actually the one wing angel, excuse me, for the finish. And then Ray Phoenix uh, from behind. Moxley in the ring now as well, the big clothesline. Big kick from Phoenix to Kenny Omega. And then a suplex from Moxley to Omega. Pac now going to go for a suplex, it looks like. Yes, cover. One, two, kick out at two and a half. All right, what do we got cooking now? Match going to continue once more. And Moxley going to tag in officially. He is legal once again. It'll be John Moxley and Kenny Omega. Moxley putting Omega in a headlock. Going to try to make him go to sleep here, it looks like. Moxley then going to attack Carl Anderson and Gallows, who are up on the ring apron. Right hands, rights and lefts back and forth now with Mox and Omega. Elbow from Moxley. Moxley actually then just got kicked. Big clothesline on the reversal as uh, here comes Gallows and a super kick or a drop kick off the ropes, excuse me, from Phoenix. Here comes Carl Anderson. A lot going on with this finish. Going home. Omega in the corner. Suicide dive. Oh, shit. Phoenix into the barricade. And then Moxley going to go for a DDT on Omega. Omega reverses it. DDT of his own. And now Pac off the top rope with his splash. And breaks up the pin. And once again, no clear-cut winner. This match will continue. And now a tag is going to be made. Here comes Carl Anderson. It'll be Carl Anderson and John Moxley. One for an RKO, it looks like. And then uh, Moxley reversed with one of his own. And then Phoenix tags in. He's legal. Off the top rope he goes. Cover on Carl Anderson. One, two, kick out. Jesus Christ, how many times can they go home for God's sakes? Elbow from Ray Phoenix. Off the top rope again. Carl Anderson catches him. Spine buster in the middle of the ring. Tag made. Here comes Gallows. And then they hit their finish. Omega with the knee cover. One, two, three. Gallows, Anderson, and Omega pick up the win over Moxley, Pock. And Ray Phoenix as Gallows pinned Ray Phoenix. One, two, three in the middle of the ring for the win. And now here comes John Moxley back in the ring, going to attack Kenny Omega. And then Gallows and Anderson going to take down Moxley. So Omega, Gallows, and Anderson with the win. Standing tall. Now here comes Lance Archer. Lance Archer attacking all three Omega Gals and Anderson. Throws Anderson over the top rope. Close line to Gallows. Archer going after Doc Gallows ringside. All right, so we got Moxley and Omega then in the middle of the ring. No closing credits, which normally by now they probably would have went to even with a attack post-match, which has to mean Omega is going to get up and attack Moxley again, or Mox is going to beat him down to, to close this out. What the hell? Who the hell's that? Moxley getting attacked by some masked man. Oh, shit. Is that, that's a Tommy. Go to sleep cup. Kenta is all in with all elite wrestling. Kenta is on AEW Dynamite. 
And Kenta with a GTS to John Moxley in the middle of the ring to close out AEW this evening. Jesus Christ. Really? Are you serious? Are you kidding me? Playoffs? Are you kidding me? Does this mean uh, AEW is also now partnered up with uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling? As, yeah, currently, right now, um, Moxley and Kenta have a little feud going on for the New Japan Pro Wrestling U.S. title, if I'm not mistaken. But what a way to close out Beach Break, as, of course, you have Omega with his history with New Japan and, uh, you know, AEW as a whole with all, all the superstars they have that have been in that company before. But then they bring in Kenta, Hideo Tommy in WWE NXT, Never really got a chance because he couldn't stay healthy um, on AEW to close out the show. Uh, helping out Kenny Omega after Omega and the Good Brothers defeat Moxley, Pac, and Ray Phoenix in the six-man tag team main event. And then uh, post-match with Moxley staring down Kenny Omega... We then had Moxley get attacked by a masked man, literally, in like, you know, a COVID mask, as we've come to know. But he also had a, a hat on as well. He was dressed in black. And then he un unzipped his sweatshirt. Um, Hideo Tommy Kenta um, attacking John Moxley to close out AEW Dynamite this evening um, with his uh, Go To Sleep Club t shirt. Uh, the GTS that he invented that CM Punk stole, depending on who you ask. But then um, Kenta with the attack, helping out Kenny Omega post-match to continue the feud with both Kenny Omega and John Moxley, and then John Moxley and Kenta. So it makes sense. It was done well. Um... So, yeah, good shows on both ends, I thought, for both AW Dynamite and WWE NXT. Um, from start to finish, um, and, you know, everywhere in between, uh, really for the first time in probably a good month or so, maybe even two months, um, that both shows, uh, you know, head-to-head, -head, both shows very, very good um, you know, from start to finish, you know, really no downside to it uh, whatsoever, I thought. But, um, of course, AEW there with the better finish, going to have the uh, pro wrestling world buzzing with Kenta in AEW. Um, you know, just a few months after the Good Brothers arrived as Impact tag team champion so um, that's why I said does AEW now have a partnership with both Impact and New Japan or are they going to be working with all three so um, or are all three going to be working you know side by side you know what I mean so um, just a, a little shocking honestly wasn't expecting Kenta of all people to uh, attack John Moxley who goes on AEW tonight but Kenta with the attack, and you know, like I said, it makes sense, you know, because it keeps the Omega Moxley story going, and then it keeps the uh, Moxley Kenta story going as well. So I'll leave it at that. But um, in the main event of WWE NXT, Chomp and Thatcher picking the win over the Undisputed Era as the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic will continue. And then a week from Sunday, we'll have WWE NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day on Valentine's Day. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on social media. Links in the description below. Main event of AW Dynamite. Post the wedding of Kip Sabian and Miro. Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford, excuse me. Yeah, we're not going that route anytime soon. But Miro is the best man. So yeah, the wedding... That Miro is involved in. Rusev have two weddings in the past year and a half or so now. Um, crossing my words there. Don't confuse anybody. There was not a gay wedding on a W Dynamite tonight. Um, with uh, with Kip and Miro. But hey, if your boat floats that way, so be it. I care less. 
uh, regardless, so yeah, post wedding of Kip and Penelope Ford with the best man in Maryland, Butler Chuck Taylor, Orange Cassie, of course, emerging from the middle inside of the cake, as Mero Rusev did in the WWE, WWE Monday Night Raw, right after Christmas last year, a little over a year and a half ago now, with Lashley and Lana. We had in tonight's main event on AW Dynamite with um, the Good Brothers teaming with the current AW World Heavyweight Champion, Kenny Omega. So it was Omega and the Good Brothers, basically the club, if you will, you know, the elite, you know, minus the Young Bucks and Hangman and AJ and Balor and everyone else that's been in the club for God's sakes. I mean, Kenta, go to sleep club for uh, God's sakes on his end too. So um, in tonight's main event of AW Dynamite to uh, close this out, we had Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers defeat John Moxley, Pac, and Ray Phoenix in a six-man tag team main event match. However, Kenta attacking John Moxley to close out the show, which, as mentioned, keeps stories moving along with Kenny Omega, John Moxley for the AW World Heavyweight Championship, and then John Moxley and Kenta for the New Japan Pro Wrestling United States Championship. So I'll leave it at that. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of both episodes this evening for both AW Dynamite and WWE NXT. It was a uh, special edition of AW Dynamite as well with the Beach Break, uh, one year post removed from Bash of the Beach, as mentioned earlier, changing the name uh, because of the copyright issues. But uh, AW Dynamite Beach Break, WWE NXT, once again, in my opinion at least, I thought they were damn good shows. Let me know in the comments below what you thought. Thank you for listening. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe as always on social media. Links in the description below. So everybody down the road, including this Sunday for live reactions, play play of NFL Super Bowl 55 with the Chiefs and Buccaneers. And then a week from then, the next newly named WWE NXT TakeOver event. It'll be WWE NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day on Valentine's Day, Sunday, February the 14th, 2021. And then a week from then, WWE Elimination Chamber. As officially, we're on the road to AEW Revolution and WWE WrestleMania 37.